On today's show, Spencer Davies joins me. We're going to go over some fake trades and play everyone's favorite game, Who Says No? That's all straight ahead on today's Locked On Cavs. You are Locked On Cavs, your daily Cleveland Cavaliers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Cavs your first listen every day. You can find the show anywhere you get your podcasts, Apple, Spotify, anywhere else. Be sure to give the show five stars, drop a comment as well. Also, make sure you're checking us out on YouTube. Just search Locked On Cavs on YouTube. Hit that thumbs up button. If you are watching the video on YouTube right now, make sure you are subscribed and Click the notification bell so you don't miss anything that we put up on the Locked On Cavs YouTube channel. Proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's show, of course, is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Hi again, everybody. I'm Danny Cunningham. You might know me from my time covering the Cavs at places like 92.3 The Fan, Cleveland Magazine, and a number of other stops along the way. Got one of our recurring friends, guests today, Spencer Davies of Cavs Insiders, and I guess a number of other places too. He now covers football, which of course does not pertain to this podcast, but he's a man of many hats. So that is something that you do need to know. What I want to talk about today are some fake trades, and these fake trades are going to center around one player on the Cavs, and that player is Karis Levert, because if you go through the offseason the Cavs had... They re-signed Donovan Mitchell, or extended Donovan Mitchell, I should say. They extended Evan Mobley. They extended Jarrett Allen. Those guys can't be traded. Not that you would want to trade Donovan Mitchell or Evan Mobley. Anyways, some of us on this show maybe thought it would be a good idea to trade Jarrett Allen, but that's not something that's possible right now. So we're going to look at Karis LeVert as the guy that maybe the Cavs could trade. Spencer, one of the things that Kobe Altman said when the season ended after they lost to the Boston Celtics in five games was that he didn't see a reason to break up the core four, which of course are the three guys I named plus Darius Garland. Um, I didn't take him at his word. I thought, okay, this is just kind of posturing. This is what uh, decision makers in the NBA do. I didn't expect all four of those guys to be back. Well, training camp starts in like three and a half weeks. Looks like all four of those guys are going to be back. So, I want to look at trading away Karis LeVert as he's sort of, to me, the next best option to trade away if you do want to remake this roster and kind of change up the role player dynamic. And the first fake trade that I put together is just, it's a one for one. I want to talk about it. It's reuniting with an old friend and that would be sending Karis LeVert to Atlanta to Larry Nance Jr. What would you think about that happening? Well, the first thing you have to think about is Larry Nance Jr. and how he embraced everything Cleveland when he was here. Obviously, he's from here, went to Revere, got his his number retired over at Revere a couple weeks ago, actually. Um, my right. buddy Mike Bevan of the Akron Beacon Journal did a nice story on him and Pete um, doing that over at their their old alma mater, of course. Um, you know, he's a family man now. He's a little bit more old and and he's he's you know he's more of a veteran presence he did some really solid things for the pelicans when he was with them before he got traded to atlanta um so just talking about the fit of larry nance jr in particular um it's like a glove here uh everyone loves him uh locker room front office management whoever it may be uh so that would be no problem uh in terms of would the fit make sense in 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 the locker room and in like on the court, that one, uh, I, I'm, I think I would be open to it. Uh, I don't think Larry's the traditional big man that you're going to want to be the backup center, but they're still kind of feeling and testing out the waters for that at the moment. Karis Levert, as we know, he's in that in between that two slash three that isn't really as big as a small forward, but is bigger for a guard. Uh, he's shown plenty of versatility as far as what he does in his role. Uh, he's had about 6,000 of them since he's come to this team, whether it's <laughs> yeah. coming off the bench being the faux point guard. If you need a guy as a microwave scorer, he'd do that in a pinch. Uh, he's actually been terrific and probably the most consistent on the defensive end of the floor, and that's been, I think, the the best part of his presence here in Cleveland 
uh, the last three years. He's done a really good job at taking on challenges, especially like the, guarding opponents, best players um, and the wings that he's had to, to try and lock up. But he on the offensive end has had his moments. Um, he's also had bouts of, of playing through a lot of injuries, a lot of, uh, you know, tendon issues and, and, you know, knee issues. And, you know, sometimes it's an ankle, like those things that have kind of been probably from over usage. And a lot of it has had to be because a lot of the guys have gotten hurt over the years and he's had to fill in. Uh, so you would be losing someone very reliable on that part um, and being able to put in a surefire starter uh, in this league and for another need. Ah, I don't know if I'd do it today, but it's not something that I would be hesitant on if that was an offer that came uh, across the board. And it depends on what the compensation would be. I don't know if they would do it straight up one for one. Right. I don't know if either of these teams would do it straight up one for one, but I do think it's something that, and I, I should mention today is the day that Larry Nance Jr.'s trade restriction is lifted. So he was traded from New Orleans to Atlanta, I believe it was on July 4th. So for two months after a trade, you cannot be aggregated with any other players um, and have that trade go through. Like if you're going to be rerouted that quickly after being traded to a team, uh, you have to be the only thing that is leaving your team other than picks. You can do draft picks, but you cannot be combined with another player essentially to make salaries work. So that is something that is just worth mentioning that today is the day that restriction does get lifted for Larry Nance Jr. The reason this interests me is because right now, Spencer, who's the third big on the Cavs? Like you've got Evan Mobley, you've got Jared Allen, but who's the third big right now? I think in a sense at the moment, it's Evan Mobley is the backup five and you have a bunch of options at the four. And I think that's what they're rolling with right now. They will address the third big. I have that on, on good authority. They will address the third big. Um, it's probably going to be a veteran. Uh, it's sitting out there right now. We'll figure it out. Um, and, and this is ironically about the time that the Cavs do start to, to round out their roster. It's been kind of historically how they've done things the last couple of years. Um, we know the Donovan Mitchell move happened uh, a couple of years right around this time. He just tweeted about it. Um, actually, it's almost, I think it's just past the two year anniversary of the move. Um, you know, they just kind of get things done on their own time, on their own pace. And they're probably like, Hey, you know, we've got to figure out two things. We got to figure out who our backup big is going to be. And we're going to figure out is Isaac Okoro going to be a part of this team. And it, it seems like that's going to be the case back on a one year deal, just from the qualifying offer that they gave him, uh, in the summer. And it, feels like that's going to be the majority of what they look at. You know, you still have the mid-level exception and, and can figure out what you do with that at the moment too. Uh, still some names out there. I'm, I'm not aware too much of, of what's left. Uh, I probably should scour a little bit more, but you know, training camp is right around the corner. As we know, media day happens September 30th and then boom, they're on their way to IMG Academy down there in Bradenton, Florida. So uh, that that's, I would not be scared if I was a Cavs fan to say, oh, they're going to carry two bigs this season. That's not going to happen, guys. <laughs> right. I know that's not going to happen. But as of now, you know, you say the third big is Evan Mobley playing backup center, which I think Evan Mobley, all the minutes that Jarrett Allen doesn't play, Evan Mobley should be playing center in those minutes. But I think Larry Nance could be a good fit because – you mentioned him when you first started talking about him as somebody that is probably more of a four than a five, right? So I do think when the Cavs are looking for that third big, you want someone that can play both the four and the five because that means that third big, and I don't think the Cavs had this luxury last year with really Tristan Thompson being that third big, is having a third big that could play alongside either Jarrett Allen or Evan Mobley, I think is something that could be a bit of an upgrade. And they didn't really have that last year. So having Nance be someone that can play some five, but is really more of a four, I think fits in really well because when Jarrett Allen's not on the floor, I want Evan Mobley to be the five. Obviously, Evan Mobley is not going to play all of the minutes um, at five that that's not the case. So Larry Nance could take up some of those, but he could also play alongside of Jarrett Allen. I think that is something that could be really good for this Cavs team. 
And, and they tried it last year a little bit with Damian Jones, but he didn't quite get the consistent minutes that probably some people were anticipating him to get. And when I say consistent minutes, I'm I'm talking eight to twelve minutes. You know, just giving these guys a spell so that they can at least kind of condition their bodies throughout the season and make sure that they're not worn out by the time May comes around. That's what you need to look for in a third big, a guy that will spell everybody. Uh, Larry is good in that role. Don't get me wrong. Like Larry has played the five for this Cavs team. We remember those times. Um, and he's, he's great as a playmaker. He's a hustle guy. He will grab every offensive rebound in sight. Uh, he will push the ball and, and you know, He's still not quite there as far as, you know, that consistency with the, the the offensive game, but he can give it to you in a pinch and he can make big impact plays and situational spots. And I think that's important. But again, I don't know how many minutes he would get, but, you know, anywhere between that probably 10 to 15 range would probably be right where he would slot in if that was the case, if that's somebody that they were looking at. And the Cavs do like – keeping guys and bringing in guys that are familiar one with their, their culture, um, but to just kind of have a familiarity overall with the, the program in the city. So my final thought on this particular trade, which obviously is a fake trade and we're playing who says no, I don't know that either team says yes right now, but I also kind of think this is something that could be revisited for both of them. I think if the Cavs were to trade Karis LeVert away for someone who plays a different position that's not on the wing, so someone that is a big, as Larry Nance is, that would be, I think, a pretty strong endorsement of Jalen Tyson. I think that is the other way to look at this, is if they're going to trade away Karis LeVert, they believe that Jalen Tyson is somebody that can play in the NBA right now, which for the 20th overall pick, I think it would that would be a pretty big win if he's able to be in the rotation on a top four team in the Eastern Conference as a rookie. Up next, I've got another fake trade. It's a trade we've talked about before on this show. Has anything changed between these two teams since we've last talked about it? That's straight ahead right here on Locked on Cavs. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. You've heard me talk about FanDuel a ton, and it's for good reason. Why? Because FanDuel is, of course, America's number one sports book. But today, I've got something a little bit different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Okay, NFL season. When does that start? It starts tonight. Tonight is the start of the NFL regular season. Sunday Ticket doesn't help you tonight, but Sunday Ticket helps you on Sunday where you can watch every out-of-market game. It is a life-changing product. I've got it. I don't know how football fans live without it. So all you have to do is go on FanDuel, bet $5. Whether you want to bet on the Browns and Cowboys this weekend, where the Browns are, last I checked, two and a half point favorites, maybe you don't want to bet on the game outcome. But maybe you think that Browns tight end David Njoku is going to be the first player to score a touchdown on Sunday for the in that Browns Cowboys game. You can get him at plus 1100. That I think is great value on FanDuel and if you bet 5 bucks on it, you can get NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV free for 3 weeks. So, like I said, FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday Ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you need, a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel anytime. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to download America's number one sportsbook today. That's FanDuel.com slash L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. Thank you again for making Locked on Cavs your first listen every day. Great stuff earlier this week with Sam Merrill. Thank you again to him for joining the podcast. If you missed that interview, be sure to go check that out wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube. Great stuff with Cavs guard Sam Merrill. But on today's show, we are talking about fake trades that the Cavs maybe could make between now and the start of the season. Of course, training camp begins October 1st. Media day is September 30th. Trade number one, Spencer, was Karis LeVert for Larry Nance Jr. Not sure either team says yes right now, but also think that's something both teams might want to revisit. Trade number two I have for you. I've got Karis LeVert, George Niang, and two second round picks going to Brooklyn for Cam Johnson. Who do you think says no to that one and why? I would think the Nets would just because... 
Ah, oh, man. Well, I'm thinking to to myself now. They have a lot of wings, so maybe right. it wouldn't be as hard of a no. Uh, but he's still a, a bright player that's only in his fourth or fifth year at this point. I know he's had his injury history, but they'd probably when you look and you canvass the league at what some of these trades bring back for these guys and and some of the amount of money that a lot of these guys are making too. Um, I don't know if that's enough per se. Uh, they might want to get a couple of veterans in that locker room. I understand that would probably be enticing for Brooklyn and that young team headed by Jordy Fernandez uh, trying to kind of mix it up and, and make sure that there's not just all young talent there. Uh, but I, I think if if I'm Brooklyn, I want to see what, what those guys have um, and if it can work together. Don't forget, too, they just – they just lost Mikel Bridges to to the Knicks. Um, you know that's a huge, huge blow as far as as scoring goes. Like you need someone to score on that team. I don't care where you are in your position a, a, as a team. You still need someone to go out there and score to compete. So uh, Cam's probably one of those guys that's going to need to do that. I know they obviously have Cam Thomas, and he's probably going to be getting thirty shots up a game this year. <laughs> but <laughs> the, the next but, shot he finds that he doesn't like will be the first one. <laughs> It would, it would. So, uh, but, but yeah, I don't know. That's, that's a tough one. It depends again, where the Nets sit as far as where they want to go. But I, I, I don't know if they would be the first to press that button yet. Right. But I also wonder if the Nets could have gotten more from Cam Johnson at some point this summer, they surely would have traded him already. Right. Like that's the thing that I keep coming back to because I agree. This probably isn't enough for the Nets to say yes to that deal. Um, but they've had all summer, and Cam Johnson also, like you brought up being a young guy, and he's only been in the league for five years, and you're right, but he's, he's also only a year and a half younger than Karis yeah. LeVert. Like, that yeah. age difference is not very big. Karis LeVert turned 30 years old 10 days ago. Cam Johnson will turn 29 in March. So there's not a big age difference, despite the fact that Karis LeVert, it feels like, has been in the NBA for a decade longer than Cam Johnson has. So that is another thing that I think is worth bringing up here is that the Nets are building for the future, and Cam Johnson's under a deal that's got him locked up for multiple years, but because of his age, I'm not so sure that he's part of the future here. Like, that is something that I do think it, the Nets would be better off, and I don't know what they could get elsewhere. Maybe they can get more. Maybe they're holding out for a better offer because, hey, he is a good player, and there's no reason for them to tr panic and trade him right now, but I also wonder, okay, if they can get more for him than this, why haven't they yet? Yeah, and, and they just locked up Nick Claxton to a very long deal. A um, lot of lot of dollar figures in that one, too. So uh, you'll probably figure out quickly who's in that core as they kind of evaluate the roster and figure out where they want to go. And again, what Jordy Fernandez sees as the vision for that team. Right, and I, I think Cam Johnson's skill set in Cleveland um, would be perfect. We've talked about this a bunch on this show throughout the summer. Like, he is somebody that I do think there was some steam. Um, you know, there might have been a little bit of smoke, I guess I should say, uh, for him to potentially end up in Cleveland earlier this summer when we were talking more about Isaac Okoro, who is still floating around in restricted free agency. And, you know, that's a, another topic for a different show. But I, I do think there's a world in which the Cavs are very interested in him. I think it, he makes a ton of sense in Cleveland. His skill set is really everything the Cavs have been searching for. Like, they just don't have... And I think a big part of the, the issue with the way the Cavs roster is constructed right now is they don't have guys. They've got Dean Wade, who is listed at six foot nine. They really don't have any other guys that are similarly sized to him. They've got a lot of guys that are bigger than him. They've got a lot of guys that are smaller than him. Cam Johnson kind of fits into that size. Like he's six foot eight, um, right around 215. He sort of fits into that mold as somebody that the Cavs, it's, yes, it's the shooting, it's the other stuff he does, but they just don't have a lot of guys that have his body type. And I think that is kind of important when you look at the shape of this roster. Unless you look at the two-way guys, because all of those guys are six nine and above. You, you know, you got Luke Travers, Amani Bates, and JT Thor, who they brought in uh, a couple of weeks ago. So how funny is that that they got their two-way guys that are all that wingish size that they're looking to develop, and yet you look at the main roster and still a little bit of a need there. But I, I feel you. Uh, Cam Johnson is a proven shooter in this league. His biggest issue has been staying healthy, and uh, I think that is that's really what might make it difficult for teams to fully buy in because of the amount of money he's making. And you pointed to it. 
that he's getting older, even though developmentally he's only in his fifth year. Right. I, I think that is something that we look at, you know, when we pull up the basketball reference page on these guys to see, you know, just sort of a ballpark of, uh, you know, obviously we watch the games, but I still go look at what guys are averaging. I go look at the career tracks. I think everyone does that works in this industry, but I don't often look at the age. I look at how many seasons they've played. And Cam Johnson, you know, it, it, his basketball reference page isn't very long because he hasn't been in the league very long. And then I go and look up and say, this guy's only like 18 months younger than Karis LeVert. Like that to me, where Karis LeVert has been in the league forever, it feels like. It, it feels like it was a decade ago that he was playing for Michigan. So it is, it's a little jarring. And I do think that's part of the reason why this trade could happen. Um, I think the Cavs would say yes to this in a heartbeat. I'm not so sure about the Nets. You think the Cavs say yes here, Spence? Uh, yeah, no, I think they would go for that. <laughs> uh, yeah. that just depends again on what offers come across. And this is the completely hypothetical game that we're playing that, you know, it, it happens every time over the off season. So, uh, but just thinking in terms of, you know, roster fit and skill wise and knowing how Cam Johnson is to transition. Like you remember those days in Phoenix when he was with Mikel Bridges, uh, right. How fun that team was. Uh, you stick Cam in the corner, he's knocking them down, catch shoots. Um, he, he has, you know, plenty of athleticism still. I know he's had his fair share of injuries, but he can still get up there and dunk the ball, run the floor, all that good stuff. Um, and, you know, decent defensively. So that's a guy whose size, you were saying, is 6'8", 215. That's a type of dude that the Cavs do not possess right now on the main roster. Right, other than Dean Wade, which is why Dean Wade has become so irreplaceable because the Cavs just don't have a second one of him. Up next, <laughs> I've got two fake trades left. One, which I don't think could happen now, but could happen in February. And the other one, I'm saying no to that. That's straight ahead right here on Locked on Cap. Thank you again for making Locked On Cavs your first listen every day. Thank you, Spencer, for joining today. And the last two trades that I want to get to, um, we'll get to the first one that I don't think this trade is possible to happen right now. But I think when we push the calendar forward four and a half months and you start to take a, a look at how teams are, their seasons are going, where they're at in the standings, this is a deal that I think could happen then. This trade, Karis LeVert plus two second round picks to San Antonio for Harrison Barnes. I don't think the Spurs do this now. I think the Spurs want to maybe show Victor Wembanyama a facade that they would like to compete at least for a little bit. But ultimately, I think they're going to win around 30 games, not be a playoff team, and sell off some pieces near the deadline. I think Harrison Barnes could be one of those pieces, and I think Harris LeVert could make sense um, for the Spurs to receive back in a trade. Interesting thought. Uh, Harrison Barnes it seems like he's a quintessential Cavalier, goes about his business, one of the, the smartest people in the NBA, one of the smartest players in the NBA, somebody who's gave, garnered a lot of respect over the years. He's not the flashy guy, but he gets the job done in sense of, of when to, to make the right plays. Um, really solid on the block, uh, backing down. He can hit the knockdown jumper. He's a little bit streaky in a sense, but it's enough to where the production – is definitely there uh, on a night to night basis in some sort of fashion. Um, I don't know if the Spurs do this right away. You're talking about competing um, in San Antonio. Remember they brought in Chris Paul, Chris Paul right. probably wants to try to win still. I know he's a little bit up there in age, but you know, Chris Paul, and uh, Victor Wembanyama, Yeah. Chris Paul's going to bring along their rookie, Stefan Castle. Um, you know, their guard room is a little bit, heavier i think still so maybe that wouldn't make sense from a karis levert standpoint um they still have keldon johnson around there so he's playing the three you got devin vassell who mixes between a three and a four <laughs> you know the classic classic nba nowadays that we don't know where they're playing the positions and what's you know but at, at the same time uh i think that's something you could could revisit like you said down the line um, and see where the Spurs are at. I think the Spurs actually might might challenge for a play in this year, if, if I'm being completely honest. So that, I, I would be surprised if I they would, get that's where quite I would be that like, high. Eh. Okay. I would be surprised if they get quite that high. I, I think they're going to win like 30 games. I think they will be much better than they were last year. But I also think they're probably still a little bit away from that. And I think they 
if it's up to them, I think they win 30 games and don't make the plan. Like, I think they would prefer to be in the lottery for one more year and then start to really go for it next year, which is why I think this trade makes sense for them. Not because Karis LeVert's a bad player, because he's not. I like Karis LeVert a lot. But because his contract is expiring and it's an avenue to cap space where Harrison Barnes has two years left on his deal at $18 million, Karis LeVert has one year left on his deal. So this is a way for the Spurs to create like $16 million in cap space. That's the way that I look at this deal is if San Antonio is not a team that's contending, which I don't expect them to be, I think they'll be better, but not contending. This is a way for them to try and make a bigger splash next summer while also accumulating a second round pick or two. And if Barnes were to come over to the Cavs, that's kind of like kicking the can down the road too for for Cleveland as far as the second right. apron goes too. Don't forget about that. That's because all the extensions are going to start to kick in, and then that's when you're going to have yourself a massive, massive amount of money that you're going to owe a lot of guys. Well, let's talk about the last trade because that brings in even more money down the road. Um, this is a trade I would say no to, but the final one I concocted today: Karis Levert, George Yang, Dean Wade. A 2030 first round pick that is top 10 protected. It's the only first round pick the Cavs are eligible to trade right now. That's all going to Portland for Jeremy Grant. I don't think the Cavs would do this, but I did want to put together a little bit of a bigger splash um, for one of these trades in today's show. Um, I do think that Portland might say yes to this one, but I don't think the Cavs are interested here. I think that's so don't get me wrong, because I think I was on this show when I suggested Jeremy Grant uh, right. for the Cavs. Uh, I do like what he brings to the table. I think that he has so much versatility on the defensive end of the floor. He is a great third option type of player who will be consistent in his scoring and will be consistent in the effort that he brings every night. He signed in Portland because he thought he was going to be chasing championships with Dame the script got flipped and now they're just way into the, the young rebuilding type of team. Uh, and so I'm sure that Jeremy Grant would be welcome to the idea of doing that. My thought is if they, if they were to go after Jeremy Grant, would they start him at the three with Evan and with Jarrett because of what I mean, you would with, have to, what we see, what we see with Lowry marketing, right? Cause Jeremy Grant's six, eight, six, nine, uh, got arms for days. Um, great, again, great defensively um, and, and a hustle guy, but also a markedly improved shooter and offensive presence who can attack off the dribble, um, attack off closeouts and all that. So I I like that idea a lot, but you mentioned it. He's making a boatload right now. For a long Cavs, time too. It's not as Cavs, if it's a one or two year deal. Yep. And the Cavs have, a ton of money allocated to Donovan Mitchell, a ton of money allocated to Darius Garland. <laughs> Let's go down the list. Evan Mobley exactly. and Jared Allen. So that's the core four, and that's where it gets tough to roster build around these guys. That's why the next couple of years is pretty pretty important because you're not going to be able to afford the type of talent you're going to want to get. I'd think about this one for sure. Um, I wouldn't be as hesitant maybe as you are on this one, but uh, would Portland want any more than that? Would Portland care because of the position they're in? Would that, those are questions for that front office and Joe Cronin. I don't know um, what they would think, but I, I'm a fan of Jeremy Grant. I know some people that I've, you know, some fans that I've talked to that they, they're not as big of a fan of that move, but um, it seems splashy, so to speak, because, you know, he's been that, type of presence we've seen in Detroit, how much he, he did well to, to get those numbers. But remember what he was the first option there. Yeah. Roles change, roles fluctuate. It's very Aaron Gordon-ish if you want yes. to go there. So, well, I mean, look who replaced Jeremy Grant in Denver. Yeah. Yep. Aaron yep. Gordon. Like, mm -hmm. like that's kind of what it is. Um, with, with this, it's just so much about the money for me. Like, the, I would – if they had not signed Jarrett Allen to the extension – that they signed him to earlier this year, which I think is a great deal for the Cavs. Don't get me wrong. But had that not moved happen, I think you're a little bit more open to this move because now the Cavs are going to be a second apron team if they make a move like this. And I don't see how they're going to be out of the second apron without trading away some of their best players when all the contract extensions they have doled out do kick in. Like that for me is the biggest issue here. It's not that Jeremy Grant's not a good fit because... 
there's not many starting fives that would be better in the NBA than Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell, Jeremy Grant, Evan Mobley, and Jared Allen. Like, that's an awesome group. Now, you might not have a ton of depth, but that's a great group, but it's also probably the most expensive starting five that you can put together, too. Yeah, and that's when you play the game. Can we pay all these guys and still field the roster that's going to compete? Because as we know, when it comes to playoff time, depth is important. It's no longer you get big three and that's it. You, you can't just fill the roster with minimum contracts and 10-day guys and two-way guys. It doesn't work like that anymore. It's not 2012. It is 2024, and there's plenty of talent across the NBA. And core four just sounds so much better than core five. Let's be honest, too. <laughs> it does. It does. Spencer, thank you so much for joining me. You can find Spencer on Twitter at Spin Davies. Of course, covers the Cavs for Cavs Insiders. Does a bunch of stuff other places as well. So make sure that you check out everything he does. Like I said, follow him on Twitter. If you're watching on YouTube, his handle is right below me, right below him. If you are listening, you can find him at Spin Davies. Of course, you can find me on Twitter at Real D Cunningham. Thank you again for making Locked On Cavs your first listen every day. Subscribe. Give us a like. Click that notification bell on YouTube, wherever you're listening via podcast. Make sure you're subscribed. Drop us a five-star review. Leave some nice comments as well. We'll be back a little bit later this week for some more coverage right here on Locked on Cavs.